Hi, this is Tony here with my entry for the Russell Goslin uh, D-Day group build. Um, and for this video, I'm going to show you the kits, and then I'll do a couple other parts showing you the build and the final reveal. Uh, before I go ahead and show you the two kits I plan on building, I uh, just want to say thank you to Russell for coming up with the group build, and to Cohen C and the others for continuing continuing the uh, build for Russell. Okay, both kits I have here, they're both Hasegawa kits. One is a Hasegawa proper, one is a Minicraft Hasegawa. I believe both these kits date back from probably the early 80s. Uh, both of these kits, I got these off of eBay, or I got them in combination with other kits off of eBay. So I think it might cost or I paid for these kits with less than $10 or maybe even $5 um, each. Uh, so let's show you my kits. All right. First off is the Thunderbolt Razorback P40, uh, P47D. Uh, this kit from Hasegawa, I believe this is a ja uh, Japanese import. Uh, um, since everything is in Japanese and there was no, no English instructions included with this. Uh, so here are the instructions that come with this. Everything's in Japanese. Same thing with the painting guides and color guides. Unfortunately, I do not read Japanese, but I think it's pretty straightforward what I'll be doing with the kit. Uh, and here are your instructions, very basic, one, two, three, four, five, six se steps. And then all the information here along the side, showing you the angle of the, the wheels, and also the color callouts for the parts, color callouts for the pilot, uh, some other information that I cannot read, and so forth. And I believe this is probably a parts list going down the side here. But it's pretty simple fill, so even if it is in Japanese, it should be pretty set for it. Um, now, the kit came sealed. It's never been opened. Uh, decals and plastic, everything's in there. I also noticed there is actually what appears to be a little tube of glue that came with this kit. Hmm. Alright, so let's open it up and take a look. Let's get these decals out of there. Alright, so we have one, two, three, four sprues, and uh, what appears to be a little tube of glue, which I won't be using, and the decals themselves. Um, I mean, for these particular decals I'm not going to use since I'm going to do a D-Day build. I'm going to paint on the stripes and find an appropriate uh, uh, decals that are pertinent to actual D-Day. Um, being these are 37 years old, I'm not sure how well they will work anyway. So, let's start off with the pieces here. So here we have the canopy, uh, which seems reasonably clear. Uh, we take a look there. I think you can pretty see, see pretty clearly through there. Um, the the framing there is kind of light. It's not that much of a. Yes, I mean, if you rub your finger over it, you can barely feel it. So I hope I won't give you any problems painting it, masking it, uh, and the body. This is an old kit, so it's all pretty much raised panel lines. Uh, you can see that there. It's actually, this is a greenish, olive green kind of color. The plastic is molded in. Uh, you have the antenna here that's molded as part of the, the side of the body. Okay, quality. And on the inside, pretty much just nothing in there. No details. We blank. The wings. You have the wings, again, you got some panel lines. These appear to be uh, recess, very fine recess lines. It's like, yeah, they look like to be pretty fine recess lines. Uh, we have the guns molded in, which is good and bad. Bad in the sense that they tend to be very fragile and easy to uh, break them off. You have the underside of the wings. Uh, there you have the openings for the shell uh, extraction as the machine guns fire. Uh, there you got the pylons for the two bombs, and the wheel wells. Uh, you also have the two bombs and two halves. 
And you got the old nameplate. And on the other side, a little bit of detail there for the uh, wheel well. There you got the Hasegawa name imprinted. Molded part of the uh, inside the wing there, made in Japan, of course. And finally, uh, we have the last brew here, uh, which is the fuel tanks, the horizontal stabilizers, the engine, the seat, the pilot, the propeller, the cowling, the wheel uh, covers, uh, the uh, the landing gear. Let me see. Little fine lines, very fine lines. Uh, it's an old kit. Uh, looking at it, I don't see any flash, to tell, tell you the truth. Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, there's the pilot there. Let me take a closer look at the details there if you can. And the engine. Not that you're going to see much of it anyway once you put the cowling on. It's a pretty basic, simple seat. The seat is very basic. I mean, it's uh, just the seat molded there as part of the cockpit. I mean, uh, there doesn't appear to be any actual uh, joystick for this. Just the pilot and the seat there. So, a very basic kit. Should go along pretty quickly. So, that's my first kit build for this. Put everything back in the box. And I'll show you the uh, P38 Lightning. Uh, the P38 comes in this side open box, which I'm not too big a fan of. Uh, I, like, I like the top open boxes so you can keep them open and easier to use uh, to hold your parts, your kit, as you're working on it. Uh, this kit, um, when I got it, only came with one sheet of instructions. Um, it stops at part four, which is only halfway built. Um, so there's probably a page uh, four, uh, three and four going to this, but did not come with the kit. Um, but fortunately, I do have another P38 from Hasegawa in my stash, and I did take a look at those instructions compared to this, and it's basically the same kit, same parts, same drawings, illustrations here. So that should be pretty easy to go ahead and follow uh, with it. Right, and same like the other kits, everything appears to be there sealed. Well, at least it came semi sealed. Tape off. And we have decals. And then stuck here, excuse me. I think I should have done this before. Okay, I'm coming. Alright, there you go. Alright, so, oops, uh, did this stuck there. Alright, so here we go. Um, yeah, looks like this comes, you have your uh, canopy. Looks like there's two options here. It comes with two. Uh, clear spindle, wonder what this is. Oh, I think this here is as well. Since if you, unless you put weights in the nose for this one, it, it'll be a tail set. I believe this is used to hold up the tail in case you didn't put up any weights there. And just a little close up there of the canopy. And the uh, frame here is a little bit more distinct. You can definitely feel it as you touch it, put your finger around it. So hopefully that will help out with the masking. All right. So what else we got here? Uh, here we have drop tanks. The wings, the uh, horizontal stabilizers, the under the wings. Uh, these pieces, this is all light, very light uh, raised panel lines here. I guess if you find this kit, I happen to have this kit. I mean, it's not that many panel lines, you may want to rescribe it, but I, I, I'm not going to go through that. There you got one of the cowlings. And on the other side, you got the Hasegawa. There, yeah, very basic, very simple. And, and uh, two bodies here uh, for the engines and the stabilizers. You got the two halves. Again, it's all um, uh, fine uh, raised panel lines. And on 
the inside. Yeah, there's nothing really. And lastly, we have the rest, which is the the rockets, the uh, uh, the, the nose, the seat, uh, some other parts here, the bottom of the main body, two engine exhales here. Uh, you got the landing gear, the wheels. You got the props. You got the other wheels. Uh, this is your canopy here. See there. Sorry for the glare. And very basic. There is just the faintest of a raised detail there, but it's very, very faint. And we got the wheels, some details there in the threads. And the pilot itself, which looks very similar to the other pilot. Probably the same old. And uh, decals. I mean, again, these decals are old. As you can see, what's I don't know what you can see is about what is white as yellowed. I mean, that's supposed to be white. As you can see, it's pretty yellow. So these are probably useless decals. But again, I'm doing this for D-Day build, so the color scheme and also all that's going to be D-Day related. So I won't be using those regardless. Alright, so those are my two kits, um, so stay tuned for the other up videos where I'll uh, go through some of the build process steps of these two kits and then the final conclusion. Thank you.